Let's just take a second and give a big round of applause really loud for the groups, for the organizers. Uh, it's been an awesome event. I'm excited to be here. So I came in from South Florida. Uh, I run an agency, and I'm just going to give you this intro because it's relevant to the talk. So our agency works with a lot of clients. So the presentation, the strategy that I'm going to give you guys today, I want you to keep in mind it's specifically for the clients of yours or your business uh, that actually has a complex sale that requires a human salesperson. So it might be enterprise software, might be a, a custom home, um, or it may be selling web design. There's a lot of agency owners in here. Um, so it's not as relevant for if you went and saw Brent yesterday and he was talking about selling airwalks. You know, it's not really for those really transactional sales. Okay, this is more for services and things like that. So I just want you to keep that in mind because that'll make the whole thing more relevant for you guys. So I want to know who I'm talking to. Uh, I know this is the A track. Who in here actually has to do some selling as part of your job? Awesome. Okay. And who in here has a business that you work for or clients that are trying to generate leads for their salespeople? Okay, good. Now, how many people think that salespeople are the worst thing on earth and we'd all be better off if they didn't have any? <laughs> all right. Well, I, I hope to re I think after, the, after your, I show you what I'm going to show you today, you may feel even more strongly about that, but that's okay. Because <laughs> You can use these things for good and for evil, all right? So great. So all right, here's the goal of today's presentation. I want to make everyone in here a more effective web designer. And I choose that word very wisely. A better designer, but a more effective website designer, especially when it comes to generating leads for your clients, OK? So I have a question for you guys. You're taking on a new client. You're about to build a website. What do you guys think the most important question to understand before you start building that website is? Does anyone have an idea? What do you always ask your clients? What's your how much? <laughs> it always comes every time I give this. How much money do you have? What does your reader want to accomplish? Yes. What does your reader want to accomplish? Okay, that's good. And you, what's your business model? Perfect. Well, you know, there's no one question, right? So I don't want to mislead you. It takes more than one question. But I would say that the most successful projects I've been a part of, we've successfully successfully determined why do people buy what you sell, and I know that's a really tough question. It's an iceberg. It's very simple to ask. Um, but you guys can probably uh, empathize with this. If you have clients, um, somehow not very many of them seem to know why people buy what they sell. There's three assumptions that this entire presentation is based on. I want to make sure we're on the same page. Okay? So you always have to test your assumptions. So I'm going to give you guys a chance to challenge me on this. So assumption number one that's absolutely critical to this is that no matter what you guys sell, no matter what your clients sell, there's actually a finite number of reasons that people buy that product or service. It's not infinite like you may think. Now, they may take different shapes. People may call them differently. But there's actually just a handful of reasons. So does anybody have a, a business, something they sell that you want to just throw out there? What do you say? Event management and production services, right? So why would someone hire someone to manage their event, right? Yeah? There you go. Exactly. So you're reducing the fear that something will go wrong. You're increasing the chance of success for them, right? You may be making them look better in front of their clients or their friends. So again, you know, we can ultimately come up with a number of reasons. It's not that hard. People just don't usually take the time to, to write them down, OK? So on the flip side, assumption number two, no matter what you guys sell, I can tell you there's a finite number of objections that you will receive. This is assumption number two. So if anybody feels like I'm wrong about assumption one or two, I'm giving you the chance to challenge me now so that we can make the rest of the presentation good. So yeah, everybody on board with me? All right, good. There's always a little risk when you do that. But so far, it hasn't bitten me, so it's keeping me honest. All right, so if you take those two assumptions, then here's my third assumption. If you know there's a finite number of reasons people will buy and will object, wouldn't you like to know that in advance? Wouldn't it be a better world to know that in advance? Great, so that's what we're going to talk about doing today, OK? When a prospect actually contacts you, when you get a lead from your website, or when you give a lead to your clients through, through their website, I'm going to show you how to know those objections and those buying criteria in advance. Wouldn't that be cool? OK, great. So let me sidebar. I need 30 minutes uh, to really make this case. This is a, a presentation that involves heavy sales lingo. Based on what I've already given you, some of you guys may be asking how they let me into WordCamp. And I completely understand that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about information architecture and design, and I'm going to talk about some new technology, right? But it's all going to come together, 
So if you're wondering where I'm at halfway through this thing, just stick with me. You told me this presentation's a little bit like watching the movie The Sixth Sense. When it's done, it wasn't really about what you thought it was about, but it all made sense, all right? <laughs> so great, let's jump in. So this whole presentation, this whole strategy I'm gonna give to you came from when I was sitting in your seat. I was at a presentation, or a conference, and it was about building a sales team. And there was an amazing guy giving this presentation named Scott Fritz. Uh, he lives in Las Vegas. He's become a, a friend and mentor of mine. And Scott built this company called Human Capital from zero sales to 160 million in seven years, and he sold it to ADP, which is the largest payment processor and, and outsourced HR company in North America. And so it was sharing his story with us about how he did that and teaching us how to do it. So basically, you know, Scott's walking through this thing. And so Scott, you know, does outsourced HR. So if you guys know what that is, you know, if you own a business, you work for a large company, someone's got to file the taxes, someone's got to explain the benefits packages to you, someone's got to make sure payroll is met, and a lot of us just outsource that to a company like Human Capital or ADP or Paychex, okay? So I use this example not to put you to sleep, but because it's a very complicated sale. And so I want to use it to make the point that probably whatever you're selling or your client's selling is less complicated than this, and we can still make this thing work, no matter what it is that you're selling. So the, when I got the aha moment, Scott was telling us that he was the first salesperson for the company. He would go in, sit down with a business owner, ask some questions, and he was very successful. And so he started hiring salespeople, and he would accompany them. And he would sit there, and the nice salesperson, Linda, would be telling you about um, all the reasons that you should outsource HR and why you should trust human capital to do it. And one of two things would happen. either the person would never really connect with the prospect and never really get on the same page with them and they would kind of lose them and be hurried out of the office. Or worse, 10 minutes into the conversation, the prospect would say, I love it, I get it, I want it. He's giving everything that he was ready to just say yes and move forward. But the salesperson had prepared a 40 minute sales presentation and so the salesperson was gonna give a 40 minute presentation. And if you've ever been on the other side and if you've ever been ready to say yes and move on to something else, um, it feels a little bit like this, right? So Scott watched this four or five times and he said, I gotta be able to solve this. And so he said, you know, there's only really five things to tell the prospect about why to outsource your HR to us. The problem is each one of those things may take 20 or 30 minutes to tell. And if you have two prospects, they may have different buying curve, right? So if you guys sell, you ever like, well, you get on the phone with one person about a website, they're all about design and they're all about how great it's gonna look and you talk to another one, and they're all about you know, cost of ownership and how fast can I have it, right? So it's the same product, two completely different sales. So he came up with this gym. It's a worksheet. And it's basically the five reasons. And he would, they would, he told every salesperson to email it to the prospect the day before he went and met with her or him. And when he showed up, the prospect would have just rated from one to five. What's important to me? So it's pretty simple. If you show up and everything's a two, and then employer liability is a five, what are you gonna kick off the conversation with, right? So you're starting to see where I'm going with this. This thing was beautiful. This revolutionized his business model. And I sat there and I thought, you know what? Like that was 15 years ago. People don't do business that way anymore. People, you know, go online, they research companies. Isn't there a way to generate the same intelligence with the websites that we're doing? And so that's really what we did. That's what this whole presentation is about. How do you come up with the scorecard for your company, and how do you build your website in a way that accumulates all of that intelligence before you ever have to waste a second with the client, okay? And that's what we're gonna talk, we're gonna see. So I'm gonna continue with the outsourced HR example, and then I'm gonna give you guys an example that's much more close to home. So we'll walk through a case study. Let's say that Scott would have called me 15, you know, 10 years ago if he still had his business, and said, I've got this thing, can you help me build a website? You know, how can you help me sell more with what I'm doing? So what I would have realized is that different people have different buying criteria. And he already had his buying criteria to go. That's what it is. So um, you know, we use the example of events, right? And so when people call, what is the, give me an example of buying criteria. What do they care most about when they call you? Like reputation, other examples, price. Are you a real company? Is there more than just one person in a basement, right? Yeah, so those are the buying criteria that they're looking for. And so you can start to come up with yours as well, exactly. So we'll do some more examples, don't worry. Yeah. So, all right, so I'm gonna talk about a hypothetical company here with two people buying outsourced HR. Two people at the same company. Who's the business owner? 
and Cheryl, who's the operations manager. So again, completely hypothetical. Um, <laughs> but Mark, as the business owner, if he's going to outsource his HR to someone, he's concerned about reliability. He wants to make sure the paychecks show up on time. He wants to make sure that the taxes are filed. He's very worried about his liability. He's worried about uh, in employee compensation, I'm sorry, uh, workforce uh, accidents, things like that that he could be sued for. And at the end of the day, he's worried about cost. You know, he's already got some people in house doing HR. You know, am I gonna double my cost if I do this? And so this is what's important to Mark. Once Mark has those three things satisfied, he's gonna make a buying decision. Now Cheryl is equally concerned with liability and the liability. That's, a, that's you know, absolutely non-negotiable. But on the other side, Cheryl's responsible for building a world-class technology uh, team, right? A talent pool. That's very hard to do. And she needs to have the right benefits to be competitive in the workspace because there's another theoretical company down the street called Google that's taking all of their Apple. And so she's got to have a great benefits package. And she knows that benefits aren't good unless people know about them and know how to use them. So she's also really concerned about the training and the service. Is someone going to come in and, and help me train these people on what's available? So, Basically, two people, one company, one sale, different buying criteria, right? So I promised you this was a presentation about web design. So hopefully we can talk about some website design now. Um, how would I actually build this into a site? So they're gonna, human capital is going to have a website, and they do lots of things. So somewhere there's going to be a very clear call to action labeled outsource your HR. Now, it's up to you, the website designer. Is this an element? Is this a big sidebar button? It doesn't matter, right? We're only at the information stage, right? We're working on the site map. We're not actually designing it yet, so it's a little abstract. But if someone goes to a page called Outsource Your HR, it's pretty clear what that page is about. We're not going to mince a bunch of different goals on that page. We're not going to blend a bunch of stuff together. It's, it's very action-oriented, right? Now, we're going to have four subsections. Now, these all map to the five benefits on the page. So I've kind of grouped you know, risk. Um, I'm sorry, I, grouped, I basically took out the cost one because that'll be implied. And so we've got these four major sections, and so these are subpages of Outsource Your HR. Now, someone like Mark is gonna go ahead and click on Employer Liability, and he'll drill down and read about avoiding lawsuits, and find out that you know, half of all companies with more, more than 30 employees are sued once a year by, the, by someone on their staff, which is a true stat in the US. And so he's gonna be learning about that. He's gonna be learning about compliance. Um, Cheryl, on the other hand, is much deeper. And she may have lots of things she needs to read about, right? So all of this information is there for Cheryl and for Mark. So you guys understand what this is as a sitemap? Does everybody get this? These are pages that are built out, nested, right? This is just my interpretation of the scorecard. Yours may be different. But you see what we're doing here. So we're setting, we're planning the lead to be able to gather the intelligence that we want. So this is what a traditional lead looks like. Cheryl would love what she saw on the website. She would send her name, maybe her company, we get contact information, and if we're really lucky, there might be a drop down or some check boxes. What's most important to you? So we're trusting the consumer to tell us the truth. And as we know, anyone who's ever sold, sometimes people don't really know what they want. They don't know how to articulate it. Um, so we're at the mercy. And so that's what a traditional lead. This is what today we are building for our customers, right? This is if you get hired to, to design a website for your staff or for your customer, this is what you're giving them, and they're very happy with it. But what if you could give them an intelligent lead? In addition to that information, what if you knew that Cheryl entered your website on your homepage, which means she may have been a referral. Uh, she went right to the Outsource Your HR page. She spent a couple seconds. She actually came back to that page three more times. She read about employer liability and benefits. And then she really spent most of her resources in the training section, two minutes and 47 seconds. She ultimately completed a lead form, which is my little green lead, and so I know what page she was on when she actually decided to take action with us, whether she called or whether she filled out a form. We can do that through call tracking. It's above the scope of the call. But regardless, the salesperson now knows exactly what she did. So which would you rather have if you're the salesperson, right? Um, what are you going to talk to Cheryl about when you pick up the phone and call her? Definitely going to make sure you emphasize the training, right? So I, you guys have been through zero training as a sales team. And you already know how to use this information. See what I mean? And so you'll see that over and over again. So it's not like you've got to go in and train the staff how to use this. People know what this means. They know how to use it. Okay? So basically, all of this was possible because we did all this work. Right? So I'm here proposing to you guys to avoid the temptation 
of just one neat little page about outsourcing your HR, which is what we all want to do, right? Let's just have a long scroll page with everything there um, because we're losing the ability to do this. But wait, if you do this work, which I realize is work, so, you know, don't get me wrong, we're talking about lots of pages and content, there are other benefits about this. So things that I can't go into complete brush on. So has anybody ever seen Back to the Future 2? You guys familiar with that? Multiple, Multiple yes. <laughs> I knew my people were here. <laughs> Love that movie. Well, you guys may know that October 2015 was the year that they typed into the DeLorean and Back to the Future 2. So we are here. We have arrived. Yes. <laughs> Several weeks from now, Doc, Marty, and Jen will arrive in Shady Oaks or whatever it was called. <laughs> um, but we don't have our hoverboards yet. Um, we don't have our flying cards, which I'm still really disappointed about. But when it comes to marketing, the future is here. If you would have done what I did in the last example with Human Capital's website, getting automation tools, which is what we're going to jump into, you would be the, this is the slowest transition I have ever seen on this slide. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Commodore 64 running this thing. <laughs> so you could automatically follow up with open leads. So let's say Cheryl filled out the form, but she never bought. She's an open lead. It's been like three weeks, impossible to get on the phone. Apparently they're, they're busy over there. And so you could actually send content customized to the training pages because you knew Cheryl was interested in training. So rather than blindly emailing out a newsletter to all of your prospects, you can actually, now this only works if you have scale. And I get that, you know, if you have 10 leads per month, this may not be effective, but right, I'm trying to show you guys how you can clients at scale. Um, you can email all the past leads who visited the site but maybe didn't buy and kind of remind them about the importance of what, you know, what they're looking at and the urgency. Remember that's fact about how many people are sued in American businesses. You could send a follow-up email. Um, social media as well integrates into this so I can actually target um, some really cool stuff. I can, addition, I can recommend additional products and services based on the pages they visit. So let's say some law changes and now you have to file a piece of paperwork within three days of a new hire and it used to be seven days, boom, right? You're gonna be able to send this information out. So again, outside of the scope of this conversation, I just want you guys to see the payoff for doing the work that I was proposing to you, all right? So all of this was possible because of the architecture. But if you remember the story, what came before the architecture? What did we have? that your clients almost never have? The scorecard. Remember the scorecard? None of this was possible until we had the scorecard. Otherwise, we'd just be blindly picking things out. So uh, wouldn't you guys like to have a scorecard for your businesses and for your clients' businesses, right? It sounds, it looks easy, but we all know it's very hard. There's a reason that they don't. And so uh, I want to share with you the process we use. And I don't want to um, mislead you. This is difficult work, but it's not impossible work, and especially if you have a process. So. Let's talk about developing your scorecard. I love me a good worksheet. I mean, in business, there's something about worksheets that are awesome. They force you to take an idea and they force you to put it into a workflow, into an action. So that if you haven't done it in two months and you have to do it again, you know where to start. You know what step one is, you know what step two is. If you have to hire employees and train them how to do it, you give them the worksheet on the process. So I'm just a huge worksheet geek in general and so I, that's probably why I like this so much. And so, of course, I have a worksheet for you guys that we're going to talk about. So everybody wants to know, how do I uncover the reasons people do business with my customers, which is our most important question. And so if I were to send you out into the wild with your customers and I were to say, go out there and customer A, you know, why people buy uh, what they sell, what would you do? What would be the first step? Anybody have any ideas? Do you do it today? Go ahead, yell it up. Talk to your best customer is really good, yeah. Well, I would say you would typically, you know, ask your customer, why do people buy what they sell, right? When, you know, eventually says, well, let's start with the customer. And you do need to ask your customer um, because it's an important part of the process and you will get something that looks like this. And uh, most people just don't understand why people buy what they sell or if they understand it, they're unable to articulate it. And that's where the worksheet comes in. We're going to force them into a process. And, and you were on with asking them what their best customers buy. So... Let's ask some more specific questions, right? Let's ask the right questions that will do this. So um, what I want to share with you guys today, and I'll give you a link. You can download this. This is a, a four process worksheet. There's four tabs. I'm going to walk you through. This is called our Sales Intelligence Sitemap Planner. This is our quick little worksheet. Now, example that I'm going to walk you through, I'm moving away from the outsourced HR, and I'm going to show you how we sell websites at Juicy Results. So that should probably hit home with you guys. So let's use an example as if you're selling websites to customers, right? All right, so step one. This is the salesperson questionnaire. If you have a customer, 
ask every single one of them to fill this out. If your sales team at your customer is them, ask them to fill it out, right? Whoever is spending the time talking to customers is the best person to complete this. So there's five quick questions. What are the most common questions all prospects seem to ask your salespeople? Uh, what are the questions that only the most ready to do? You ever get that phone call when someone's ready to go? They ask different questions than someone that's just kicking the tires. That's important to know. We'll talk about that. What are the most common objections? What are the biggest pain points you solve? And can you list the biggest opportunities? So if you get the right client, they do all this work for you, and the next three steps are easy. Doesn't matter, right? Sometimes it takes. Now, this is why we get hired as website developers. It's not just to pick a pretty site, right? I mean, it's us forcing the customer into knowing their business model, to knowing their buying drivers, and shaping a site like this. So it is work, and I don't want to, to mince the words on that. So that's step one. So sites, when you get a new prospect on the call, what do they ask you? Anybody? What are the questions you always hear? What's From, it gonna cost? What's it gonna cost? Yep. Gonna Timeline, right? Can I have a slider? <laughs> How many slides can I have on the slider? <laughs> Does I have to pay for slide? <laughs> Great questions, right? So I get asked all the time, hey, I'm in the legal, I'm a lawyer. Have you ever done another law firm website, right? Or I'm in healthcare. I don't know why people ask that. I mean, it, it, you know, to be honest with you, for the sites we build, like it's never held us back, but they love to ask that question. So the most ready to buy customers ask things like, um, how quick is the website, right? What are the payment terms? People don't ask what are the payment terms when they're just kicking the tires or if they're just starting the exploration. So it's a different question, right? All right, so step one, hopefully your customer does all this work for you. It's not a perfect world, but it does happen like 15, 20% of the time. Um, then you go to this. Now, then you go to the pain and pleasure. Now, I have a whole presentation about this. Um, I actually do the webinar if you go to our website. It's called Why Your Website Isn't Converting, and it's about the neuroscience behind people, why people do things. But basically, take this away. People only make change in their life, take action, because of two reasons. To move closer to pleasure, or to move further away from pain. I know it sounds very crude, but anything you do in life boils down to that. It's based on evolution, our survival, you know, our instincts. So um, what is the pain that, you're, that not having a website could create? Maybe they have a terrible looking website and they're embarrassed by it. Your client ever told you that? I did this website, it sucks. And I just had to like embarrassed by it. Or I have no website and everyone's like, are, you know, they're calling me and asking me if I'm in business because I don't have a website. Uh, customers turn away because they can't access the website and mobile devices. Is that a pain point? Absolutely, more and more common. I have to spend money and wait each time they want to make updates to their website, right? WordPress solves that. Uh, paying high monthly license fees. We had an attorney call us looked at his four page website, and he's like, how fast can you do the website? Because I have to spend $2,000 a month to keep my website up. I'm like, what do they do for that? And he's like, they keep it running. <laughs> <laughs> it really happens, that's a pain point, right? So he's motivated, as soon as I told him that, that you know, his whole website for $2,000 a year and do anything he ever wants for it, versus $2,000 a month, he got really motivated to sign those papers and move forward, right? So what's the pleasure? So a web presence they're proud of, ego is huge when it comes to it. If you guys deal with business owners, sometimes they don't care if they get business from the website. It's just about image, you know? Um, new leads, more sales today. Uh, educated, prospective customers means less effort, right? I'm educated. So these are all pleasure that you, so you can see where I'm going. So whatever it is that you sell, the event, um, there is pain, the fear of being embarrassed at your event, the fear of not having the entertainment arrive on time. There is pleasure. The idea of a successful event, the new business you might get from it, keeping your bride happy because you don't blow the wedding, things like that. All right, so that's step two. Uh, any questions on the pain pleasure part? Because it's a huge topic, but I'm just flying over it. So, all right, great. Um, now, all of this came from step one. So I just want to back up and say, you do this, and this becomes pretty easy. You do that, and this becomes really easy. So what are the sales drivers, and what are the common objections? Do you remember what I started with? The two assumptions? There's only a couple of reasons why people buy what you sell, and there's only a couple of reasons why they don't buy it. So why not put those on paper? Because it's gonna make the site map really easy, okay? So we list it out. By the way, a sales driver has to be something that you believe is strong enough to get people to take action. Our number one competitor in the room, no matter what you sell, is usually not another firm providing the same service. It's usually apathy. They usually do nothing, right? They just decide it's not worth the effort. 
So a sales driver has to be something like that $2,000 a month that guy was paying that that was going to go away. That would actually make it worth their time. So when we're done, it's time to go to the sitemap. So if you had all this information, you basically have your worksheet. It's time to build the sitemap. So we just pencil in our website, you know what I mean, before we do like the big graphical thing. We have website packages on our website. And here are all the drivers, custom website design, um, cost of ownership, timelines. And I actually put, is it a trigger? Is it an objection? I'm actually listing out what it is. I actually have a, a section called common concerns. Why so much? <laughs> no experience in my industry. So uh, all of those things on the website. Not because I necessarily want every single client to read it, but if they go and they read it, I know what I'm going to be talking about when I call that person, right? I'm gathering sales intelligence by being a, a more effective website designer, which is what the whole thing is about. So I'm just going to zoom in. This is what it looks like. Um, by the way, some, some are still being worked on. So for us, this was a, a process um, you know, of delivery. It doesn't have to be all at once. Um, I've also probably overbuilt it out for the benefit of you guys in this presentation. It doesn't have to be this robust, okay? But if you know what that information is, you're set up to do all the cool things we were talking about. All right, so if I did this, and it's uh, 10.42 on a Tuesday, and I've just finished my seventh cup of coffee, which is about where I'm at, at 10.42 on a Tuesday, um, and I get this lead from Jason. Now, you guys haven't been through any training. Let's see how we do, okay? So you get a lead, it's Jason. Uh, he's local, which is interesting. He cited the website packages page. Now, I know that I run ad Google AdWords pay-per-click to that page, so I can actually verify that's where he came from. Uh, he went to the project management and customer service right away. Spent about 12 seconds. Went to the timeline page. Uh, went to the common objection of, I need my website fast, which is a sidebar. Went back to the timeline page and ultimately spent less than two minutes on the website and filled out a lead form. What do we know about Jason? Jason's in a rush. Jason probably hired another website designer that disappeared. Uh, I know that probably never happens in Toronto, but in South Florida that happens a lot. He was so good. He was so cheap. I thought I was so sure it was going to work out. Uh, <laughs> won't return my phone calls. Took my deposit. So yeah, so this is Jason and he's ready to go. All right. Now, a couple minutes later, uh, I'm just finishing that cup of coffee and I get this from Julie. Now, Julie came in right to the custom website design page, which is a pretty deep thing in the AdWords to that page. So I'm guessing she found that through natural pay-per-click. I'm sorry, natural SEO. She went to our website packages page four times for three and a half minutes. Uh, she spent a little time on our cost of ownership page. She went to the generate more leads page, spent over a minute, really read it. There's about 800 words of copy on that page. She really got involved. Um, did take out the timelines, wanted to know about our customer service, and eventually went over and looked at our team. And between the About Us and the team page, she spent almost three minutes. She went to look at our case study page and spent another three minutes. And then she went and found the big call to action in the navigation bar that says, get started. Read everything on that page, filled it out, and sent me the lead. Now, do we feel like Julie's a very different mindset than Jason, right? So what are the things we're going to talk about when we call Julie? There you go. Getting more leads, yeah? Well, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Julie everything I, I know about my service. I can tell she's pretty diligent. I have a whole presentation with like 20 slides. I'm going to give her the whole thing. She asked me for two referrals, I'm going to give her four. I'm going to bury her in details. That, that's the kind of person Julie is, right? Not going to do that with Jason. Jason says, where do I sign? I'm not going to be like, you should call our references. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go, you know what I mean? I'm not going to bore this guy. So again, you guys haven't had any, right? I mean, people just get this stuff. And that's why it's so powerful. Because when you have this information and you talk about it the way we're talking about it, it becomes pretty obvious. Okay? So this is our sales intelligence sitemap planner. Uh, I've uploaded a bit.ly link. It's a live Google Drive. Um, I'll get a drink of water while you guys take photos and write. So any questions so far on how we arrived at our sitemap and how we'd be using this technology? How do you get the data, right? Yeah. So glad you asked. That's what the rest of the presentation's about. <laughs> I'd be worried if nobody asked that question at this point. I'm like, they're not listening. <laughs> All right, so stay over here. OK, so everybody got this? Cool to go? I, I tweeted, I, I'll tweet this out right after the uh, call as well. 
Um, so use it, feedback. I mean, you know, we all are in the same business, but I mean, it's just an open source kind of thing. And I want to know if this works for you. If you guys have questions on it, you can email me about it. I'm happy to help because we're making this a big part of what we do. This is part of a new book I'm working on called New Customer Machine. And so I just really want to get it out there and see how it works out. <coughs> so that tool is really how you ask your customer, why do people buy what you sell? So just to button this up, you're not actually going to call them and say, hey, why do people buy what you sell? Although sometimes I do that if I feel like it's a pretty knowledgeable customer. I basically take them through the process and I uncover it, right? So now we've got the ideology out of the way. So I've spent the majority of the presentation on why to do it and what it ultimately looks like. Let's talk about how to do it. So the good news is this stuff is so easy. If you, the work is setting it up. The work is using it. Buying the marketing automation tool, installing the plugin is the easy part. So really what we've been talking about is not one tool. It's the idea of user profiling, which is that lead that came through. It's the profile that user did, and lead scoring tools. So user profiling lead scoring tools, has anybody um, not heard those terms yet? Is that new for like, the first time? OK, that's fine. That's fine. I, this marketing technology, this marketing automation stuff has been around for a decade at like the multi-million dollar corporations. It's just really become more accessible to everybody in the last couple of years. So I think you're going to hear a lot more about this stuff. So we at Juicy Results are an act-on agency. Uh, we decided to go with one tool. I mean, these are big tools, right? I can't learn them all. We decided to go with act-on because right out of the box, it integrates with WordPress. It's very little work. Um, it takes just a tiny bit of work to, to integrate every gravity form with act-on. It works really well. You guys have probably heard about HubSpot. I've heard they've made leaps and bounds with being more WordPress friendly. They weren't a year and a half ago when we got this. Um, you guys have heard of Infusionsoft probably. You've probably heard of Marketo, Pardo. Uh, it's Pardo, by the way, not Pardot. Right? Um, yeah, Eloqua. These are all marketing automation tools. Now, it is a WordCamp conference. We're, like I said, we're a WordPress shop. We've decided to go with Acton. I have been told about a plugin called Spokal, which is very cost effective, completely you know, plug and play with WordPress, and it basically integrates with your WordPress site. I've not used it, so I can't verify it, but I wanted you guys to know about it. So, is anyone using any of these tools that I mentioned or something similar? What are you using? HubSpot, awesome. And what's that? Acton. Acton, great. Jump lead. I don't know about that one. Okay, awesome. I'll probably reach out to you about that. That's cool. I want to know about this stuff. Jump lead. Yeah. So here's what's going to happen. People are going to call you and say, I've got HubSpot, I'm in a contract, I've got Acton, I've got Infusionsoft. And you're going to say, I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know what to do with it. You're going to do everything I just showed you for them, and you're going to make a lot of money. That's really what. <laughs> Take advantage of the fact that they've already spent the money on the, the content. Show them how to use it. Show them what they can do, and they will be blown away. I would say I two to one ratio, we get a client with a marketing automation platform that we show versus I talk them into a marketing automation platform. There's, there's so much buzz about this stuff right now. People think that they just write a check and they get all this and they're so, the salespeople for HubSpot are so good. Uh, they are, they are, they're amazing. And so people are signing up left and right. And then I, what's that? A million ads for infusers in the small biz community. Yeah. So, so I hope you guys get this. This is going to be on your front door and hopefully now you're prepared to take advantage of it. All right. So the cool thing is no matter which one of these tools you do, it's like installing Google Analytics. I literally took a little piece of code from Acton, I put it on our website, I was up and running. I got all the user profiling, I got all the lead score. It also, had, you know, if you want to know that Mark Zuckerberg came to the site and you want to know all the pages and you want to be able to keep records, you need a CRM that integrates with this as well. Um, a lot of them, like Spoko, have the CRM built in, you know what I mean? So um, it can be as much technical headache as you want. A customer relationship way of keeping track of every customer you're doing business with. You know, Salesforce is the most common one. Uh, we use a one called Nutshell. Salesforce. Salesforce, yeah, Nutshell. Uh, there's a million. Um, so anyway, that's the technology. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper. So when I heard about this, if I was in your seat right now and I watched everything that I just showed you, I have this question, which I did when someone showed this to me. And that was basically, how, how do you know that that was Mark that visited those seven pages? Like, how do you know that was Julie that went to our About Us page, right? You guys wondering how to actually do that? So 
if you guys do any web development, anybody, we all know that everything on the web is tracked through cookies, right? So that's how Google Analytics works. That's how everything works. So there is something, there, the onus is on you guys as the marketers to, to match this up. I'm going to show you how. So there's two ways. There's the inbound way. When Mark or Cheryl filled out a lead form, it was retroactive. So if Mark visited 50 pages, I didn't know who Mark was. I just know user 1972483B had been to those 20 pages. And then as soon as that lead form was filled out, it all came together. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you do need to find creative ways to get people to trade their contact information for what you do. But the good news is, is there's an out as well. If you have a customer database of 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 people, you send them an email through Acton or HubSpot or whatever it is, and the second they click on any of this, the, co the connection's made. So you just email them anything. This is a, just a helpful piece we send out you know, to certain clients, advanced keyword selection. Um, I'm not selling them anything. I'm just giving them info, trying to get them to click. I don't give the whole information in the email. It's a teaser to get them to click because I want that connection in my database. So when a new lead calls us in, we take in the information, we send them an email through Acton with something that we want them to click on, and now the whole buying process with that customer, I know every time the website. From the cookie. From the cookie, you know how it's emailed. If I've emailed them and they click, that connection's made. I've already manually entered the email. Then you need to be getting them to fill out that form. Yes, it's not a, it's not a complete world, you know what I mean? Yes. And then once they fill out their name, it, it's connected. Yes. That, that little piece of code, just like Google Analytics does. But you need the newsletter to be connected to your website. It cannot be a third party. Email. It's got to be through your marketing automation tool. It's a great point. The email has to go out to the automation tool. What percentage of visitors end up being identified uh, from a given visit? Hmm. Good question. I, totally like guessing. Pulling a number out of the air, 20%. We we have we have really good. Yeah. 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 Depends on how you're targeting that person. If you buy email leads, then th that number goes way up because you're emailing them. Cool. Yeah. That's outside of my scope. Uh, the, I use Acton. We go all through there. Yeah. Yes. So that's that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The marketing automation tools do. They're they're just they're a suite. So it's like buying Microsoft Office. You don't just get one. You get um, the email platform. You get the you get the the lead scoring. You get all kinds of cool stuff. Um, with Acton, I can set an alert if I'm working with a prospect. Um, and they've been cookied, I can set an alert to text message me anytime that person visits my website or opens an email that I send them. And I can call them and I can say, Tom, I was just thinking about you. Have you read that proposal I sent? And I'll be one of those creepy, sales, like marketing people that can read their minds. Yes. Yes, it applies. To be a world-class marketing automation firm or person, you have to be very multidisciplined. Think about what we covered today. I mean, sales terminology. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. This is bringing it all together. This is bringing all the stuff you're learning in all these rooms and everything you read online, putting it together in one complete package. That's really what this is about. So. Inevitably, when I used to give this presentation, um, I would get asked a lot. Uh oh, my batteries died. My batteries might have died. Made it through most of it, though. Um, I would always get asked. Change the batteries right before the presentation. That's not cool. All right. So everyone always says, "How is this different than Google Analytics?" Or how do they work together? Right. So I just want to make the point that. Google Analytics is aggregate data. So everything we learned about from Alicia yesterday, or if you were uh, in the room about A-B testing, it's uh, making changes to your website based on trends, based on what a percentage of people do about, you know, Crazy Egg, Google Analytics. These are macro percentages. They're anonymous. Good to go? 
Oh, no, it's OK. I got like three slides. Um, individual user tracking actually tells you that Mark visited the pages. So you don't use this necessarily to change your website design. You use it to sell. Yes. So um, the other difference is that aggregate data is anonymous versus user profile is tied into your CRM, as I told you. And it you know, tracks what the user does on your app versus a marketing automation tool is the whole It's all company interaction, website, email, manually entered notes from the salesperson. It's a complete record. So it's much more robust. And so the high level takeaways is basically our assumptions. Every product or service is bought for just a few few reasons. You guys were on board with that. There's only a few key objections to it. And all things considered, wouldn't it be better to know that in advance? And after that, today, you guys know now how to do this. So that's it. I'll take some questions, yeah. So one more thing before I answer questions. I want you guys to know um, we're in campaign. We committed to releasing one video a day for 365 days straight. So today is like day 84, I think. It's a two to four minute video about something marketing, about what I covered today, about SEO, about website design. It's something taking all of the stuff we've done. They're called Juicy Bits. And uh, they're quick. And you can get them on Facebook or YouTube. And I'd love for you guys to check them out, share them, like them, let me know what you think. So yes? Um, someone just told me that this awesome ad that you just keep writing gets like $500 a month. Is that true? Yes. The Spokal, I think, is like $50. But yeah, the Acton, the HubSpot, they are in the several hundred dollar range per month. Exactly. I haven't used it. I've been told it's a great starting place uh, within w the WordPress ecosystem. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Oh, OK. Got it. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. When we signed up for Acton, we spent, uh, we went through like a, a, a four week training program. I mean, it was like two hours a week. You know what I mean? But it was, um, it was surprisingly intuitive. Yeah, it was. And I think especially the harder stuff is learning what I showed you today. It's not how to do it, it's what to do with it. They don't teach you that, how to do it. Hotjar? Um, Hotjar, again, to me, is more of a macro thing. Like, it's about making decisions on your website. If you guys know what Hotjar is, it records how people interact with your website so you can actually see like, what they clicked on and what they did. Um, I don't know a way to, to link up the hot jar recording to what they did. That would be pretty cool if we can do that. But I don't know if we can do that. Yeah. You quickly mentioned the marketing automation tool. Yes. Do you have some like, top resources that you have for like, uh, talking about that to your campaign, about setting yes. up? Yes. Um, Acton has the success library, and HubSpot has their own. And I would say those two guys put out content about how to use their tools. And I think you can steal it and apply it to other tools. <laughs> I, I totally think it's universal. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm breaking all the convention of less picks are better, squeeze. These are complicated sales. That's what we've learned. And uh, an engaged user is going to be more likely to buy. So your lead count will go but on purpose. So it's a quality over quantity game. So you have to realize what you're doing you know, if all of a sudden you start getting less leads. But you know, this is a solution where when your salespeople say, we're a little overwhelmed. We're getting a lot of leads. We don't know who to call first. We don't know what to do. This is a perfect solution for them. Yeah. All right. I can't share the slides with you guys, I'm sorry. This is a, a, a webinar that we do um, a lot for clients. So I just don't want to put them out there because then it's just you can Google them and find them. I know the presentation will be online and you can find it that way. Um, if you guys want to see any specific slide or something, tweet at me and I can, I can send it to you or email me at Juicy Results. I have a stack of cards here if anybody wants them just so you have my email address. Um, yeah. Which point in my business as an agent, as soon as I saw this, like as soon as I saw what I could do, I knew this was the future. We already help companies generate leads. 
So when I saw that we could generate intelligent leads like this, I, I was all over it. I've totally immersed myself in this stuff. I love it. Yeah. Yes. Sure. I'm wondering if you if you set up something on a contact form somehow where you ask people out of the five to actually, actually ask them to fill that out. You know, hey, we're taking a survey. What should be the issue or, or whatever it's supposed to be? Before you have to contact with the first time, they can tell us what that is. How successful do you think that would be? Oh, we've done that for years. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The, the, it, basically, the question is, if you don't have all this, can you just still ask the prospect of the lead form, what do you care about? I would say if you still went through the, like the problem is most of your customers don't know why people buy what they sell. Like, so they can't give you the options. But if you really had that scorecard for, for human capital, I could easily just put five check boxes out there. The difference is, is the, the richness of the data I'm getting is just a little less, you know, but it's better than not having it. Yes. Listen, if you guys, if you don't buy the marketing automation platform and you start designing your website this way, you're going to get more qualified leads that are better educated and, you know, and your site's going to rank like crazy because you're answering all the questions that they're asking. Yeah. All right, guys, we got to cancel it. You can come up and ask me questions and have a good time at lunch, guys. Thanks for coming. Yeah.